All right, so you're real excited here to be able to go do a presentation. <laughs> you're probably nervous. You're probably shaking inside. You're probably thinking, how do I get this ready? I don't know, you've, you've either been asked to give a presentation, do a training, or maybe you're a volunteer and you're in an organization and they picked you to stand up and deliver information to people or maybe it's just time for you to get out there in the world and deliver a presentation. Ah, but here's the biggest question you have on your mind. How do I organize my content, right? How do I do this? How do I deliver a great presentation that people will say you did a good job and you don't look like a fool? I know, I know, we don't wanna look like fools, right? When we're doing our presentations, we wanna do a good job. All right, well, let's get into this so you can get organized and feel confident about the message and the content that you're delivering. Let me show you a format or a particular template that I believe will support you in creating your message. So whenever I'm putting together a message, it's great to have some kind of framework or format to follow so I feel like I'm getting organized because there's lots of things you can say. You know, a 30 minute presentation, 15 minute or maybe even two hour presentation. If you have a type of format or a template, you can feel like you got a rail to run on. There's a point A, a point B, a point C, and, and you can just work all the way through the steps. So when you feel organized, you can feel con confident about what it is that you're doing. Now here, here's a couple points here I wanna show you in organizing your content. First and foremost, who are you talking to? That right there is a really big game changer in the quality of your content. And knowing your audience helps you in the structure of putting together your content and the context in which you're gonna deliver the message. So who is it that you're talking to? That would be something to get clear of. Who's all gonna be in the room? Who's all gonna be watching? And that will help you in knowing who you're looking at and who you're talking to. Because when you have five or 10 different ideas about who's in the audience, you literally will feel more scattered in the way that you're presenting your information. So dial in on who. The second part of this is why. Why are you giving this presentation? You know, this is the outside of the box. Outside of the box is who is it you're speaking to and why is it that you're giving the presentation? Is it a training? Is it education? Is it informative? Is it motivational? Is it transformational? What, what is the reason for you to stand up and to talk to people? To dial in on that why of what you're doing there in that presentation supports who it is that you're speaking to. And I'm gonna come back to these and share a little bit more details as we go through. I just wanna run through the particular template. Who you're speaking to, why you're up there speaking is the outside of the box. On the inside of the box, there are four different components of giving a presentation. There's how you introduce yourself, the way in which you deliver the instruction. Be sure that you're going to inspire them in one way or another and using a story to inspire people is great. And then at the end, be sure that you're actually inviting them to take specific action. All right, so let's back up. Outside the box is who and also why. Inside the box, there, first here's the intro. The intro, the people need to know who you are. Sooner or later, they need to know in the presentation, who are you, where'd you come from, and what gives you the right to stand up there. Three questions that their minds as an audience, they're asking, they're wanting to know. Second part is, they want you to answer some questions for them. What is this that you're teaching us? How does it work? When and where should I use this? And what's my first step? When it comes to inspire, this would be examples of using the content that you just shared, or this would be your personal experiences of using the content that you just shared. Then at the end, be sure that when you go to invite them to take action, that you give them a very specific action step. This gets missed by presenters. I don't know why they do this, but they think that the, the audience is picking up what they're supposed to do through the intro, the instruct, and the inspire, but that, that doesn't, that, that's not obvious to the audience. Be a great presenter by the end of your presentation, giving them a very specific step that they can take action on and complete within 24 hours. I was at a presentation once and a, a presenter did do the invitation part at the end, but it was like some 30 day program. I had to like 
you know, journal for 30 days straight. I walked out of that event thinking, well, that's going to be a fail. I can't go 30 days straight. I think what would have been smarter is if the invitation was, you know, let's journal in the next 24 hours. Well, as an audience member, I would feel like that was an instant win. So you want the people at the end of your presentation feel like they know what to do in the end and whatever it is that they're going to do, it's an instant win within 24 hours. And this invitation part, if you want to like, you know, be a great presenter and have this invitation part at the end, you give them the action step they take within 24 hours, then give them the next action step after that, that they can finish in 24 hours. If they can win and then within 24 hours win again, that just made your whole presentation awesome. Because people go to presentations to learn information, get inspired, and take action. That's what they're there for. They're coming to listen to you because they want to learn information, get inspired, but they need to know what to do. And if you can narrow that down to a 24 hour and a 24 hour step that they can take, because they won in the action step that they took at the, you know, that you gave them there at the end, they then will turn around and start telling people about your whole presentation. This is like the missing piece. This is a missing piece. This is a missing piece when it comes to putting your presentation together. So we're going to review this again. Let me just review this again because this is a great agenda, simple framework to organizing your presentation. Clarify who it is you're speaking to and this is what you do. You get a, get a piece of paper, write a paragraph this big of who you're speaking to. Get really clear on it. Write it down, paragraph that big. Why are you giving this presentation? That's another little paragraph. You're writing this out so you're getting your mind super clear about what you're doing. Write out who this is, write out what this is, then the intro, who are you, why are you up there, and what gives you the right to be able to be up there. So there's three questions there to answer. Boom, boom, boom. So notice you're just going right down the page just to gather your insight here about how you're going to do this. When it comes to instruction, this is what they're looking for. What is this? How does this work? When and where do I use it? And that's, those are their questions. What is this? How does it work? When and where do I use this? And that's what you want. Those are the questions you want to answer in the instruction section. Now here, as an extra little suggestion to you, here, be sure that you use a diagram or some type of imagery to help those visual learners because there's seven different learning styles in the room. Seven different learning styles. But here, instead of just rattling through instructions, be sure you give them some, something to look at. But they want to know, what is it that you're teaching? How does it work? When do I use it? Where do I use it? Then here for the Inspire, somebody else's example that they went through and how they used this and it worked, or your personal experience of using the information and how it worked. And then of course, I just reviewed the invite a whole bunch. This is where you invite them to take action on this particular action step within 24 hours and it's going to be a win. And then if you decide to move forward, here's the next action step that'll be 24 hours and you will win. That is a winner right there. It works. You know, after the 5,500 presentations I've given, 5,500 presentations I've given, I've narrowed it down to these six different parts of this particular template to give presentations. And what's great about that is I don't have to wonder if I'm missing anything in my presentation. Because part of a presentation is psychology. You delivering information to other people. And all those questions I just gave you for you to answer when it comes to your presentation unlocks the mind. Because if you can't unlock the mind of the listener, they can't listen. And each one of those questions I just gave you are those different doors of the mind you've got to unlock so that they can hear you. Learning is not automatic anymore. It's just not. People have so much going on inside their mind, so many things they're thinking about to get their attention and to be able to deliver information to them that they actually can hear is a psychological game. It, it's a game because it's like, wow, I gotta make sure I cover all these. Because if I'm not covering all these, and I'm missing some of these points that I just covered with you. If I'm missing some of those, then the audience can't hear me. And then they just sit there staring at you. So the game for me is cover each one of those sections. Know those answers before I deliver the message. So I can unlock their mind so that they can listen. 
Because it's only after listening and understanding that a person will actually take action. And if your audience can take action on what you just taught them, they're going to talk about you. They're going to spread the word. They're going to tell people about who you are and what you do. And now those people are going to be interested in what you had to offer. And so delivering a presentation is powerful. It's exciting. It's fun. It sure stirs up the butterflies on the inside, right? Ah! But it's so fun when you have a template to follow and you have literally boxes to check there so you don't miss one of the important psychological parts of teaching and opening up a person's mind. Well, there you go. If you missed what I just said to you here, go and rewind and listen to it again and write down all the questions I gave you because I wanted to give this to you in a really nice, concise way so that now you can do the work and prepare for your presentation. You usually never get a second chance. And when you got one chance to open up the mind of that listener, you take that chance. You take that chance in a, in a very focused way. Do the planning and preparing ahead of time. Don't wing it. If you wing your presentation, you're not using all of the steps of psychologically opening up the person so that they can listen, they learn, they understand, they can take action. Because as a presenter, I hope that I can cause people to take action. So here's your one step, is to take a look at who you're speaking to. If you can think about who it is you're speaking to and at least take a moment and consider who the listener is, you begin to focus in on how you're gonna help them, support them, teach them, serve them. But remember that the most important part about a presentation is knowing who you're talking to. The second part is why. Why are you delivering this presentation? Who and why? But the first step is take a moment and think about the audience you're speaking to. Really think about them. Think about their life. Think about what they do in a common day. Think about their challenges, their struggles. Think about what they wish for. Think about what you could do to help them. But to take a moment and to write that one little paragraph, just the one little paragraph about who is the person who's gonna be listening to you. Because that one step causes your mind to dial in and it also pulls on your heart to dial in. Because it's a person. Preparing for a presentation isn't just about content, it's about caring about the listener. And the more you care about them and you understand who they are, your words, your thoughts, your tone of voice will calibrate to connect to that person. If you take a moment and write that small little paragraph, that will calibrate you in how to organize your content. And it's a step that presenters miss. They get all caught up into just content, thinking it's all the information, and then when they stand up to deliver their presentation, they don't even act like they even know who they're talking to. They removed the human experience. Us as teachers, we have a responsibility to connect to the people, but we connect through mind and heart. And that happens because you take the time to write that first little paragraph of who it is you're speaking to. Calibration to the audience is important to create great content. And then that makes you a great presenter. So you're getting ready to put a presentation together? Well, don't put it together in some random way. Follow this template and just knock your presentation out of the park. Now, if you like the conversation we're having here about being a great presenter and finding or delivering your message, well, stay close to us here at Three Key Elements because we have a training course called Present Yourself. And check out the link below because this is an incredible course to be able to take your skills to that next level. And also subscribe. Don't miss any of these training videos because you know they're great and they're perfect timing. And man, I just don't want you to miss any of the great material I have for you. Okay, so subscribe. 